<laughs> you know, be something different. So I agree I'm with what you're saying. Be Tommy Black, man. There you, you go. You'll know me. Man. My bug eyes and then <laughs> and my laugh, and then I got that country slur. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I say words that like that that ain't that ain't how you pronounce that. I don't give a damn. Oh, that's that's I'm, what makes I'm, it funny oh, though. Oh man, oh man. So yeah, man. So so another thing, and that is one of the reasons also that I have decided to open up my own comedy club. Tell me about it. Well, I'm one of those people when you don't give me a stage or you don't open up a door for me, I'm gonna build my own door. So I, I remember I did my last comedy show at uh, Amador Live. And we sold out in three days, bro. I'm talking about tables, like it's packed. And then, you know, as you get older, your, your, your business sense starts to change. And I don't enjoy myself now as much as I used to because now I'm looking at the business side of the house versus just me going out and, oh, this wild out. No, nah, I don't want to do that no more. I'm looking at the business side of the house. Yeah. Because to me, we have to start living or uh, 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 leaving a legacy. We're not going to be here forever. So one day I did that show at Amador, and then I started paying attention to all the food and the drinks that was on the table after the show was over. So even though we sold out, I started looking at that money. So I went and did a show in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And gentleman up there by the name of Sergio, man, my homeboy, he always was on me about, like, man, you need to own your own club. He said, you're making money for everybody else, but what about making money for Tommy Black? Mm -hmm. So I pondered that thought, and I pondered that thought. And then um, I remember, um, I think D.L. Ugly came to town. That's and hilarious. I, yeah, and I did some shows at, you know, the other comedy club. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one I did, I sold out on a Sunday. So I'm one of those guys that if, you, if I've already showed you that I can sell tickets, you should, I want to be put in, in front of, uh, you know, the D.L. Ugly's or or whoever else you bring in town, because to me, that helps me build my audience. Yeah. So when I don't get that opportunity, that's when this competitive gene come in me, and I'm like, okay, we're going to play it like that. So, of course, I started looking around for a club. So I wanted to find a building. <clears throat> and it's in El Paso, people. Um, I wanted to find a building that was bigger than the other comedy club. Okay. Uh, I want to build a better ambiance than the other comedy club. Uh, I want to give uh, more people opportunities at this club than they probably get at the other comedy club. Uh, better sound system, better light system, uh, better service. And I want to bring different comedians. I want to bring those comedians that you grew up looking at. You know what I'm saying? Like, say, if I, if I could bring a Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I bring Kevin Hart. And I don't, I don't want to say who I'm bringing because we're already in talks with some other people. And I know that. You know, in this business, I'm learning that you you have to be quiet until everything is uh the contracts are written because people will try to go behind you and take your ideas. So I'm not giving people the opportunity to take my ideas. But I think this club, when people see it, they're going to appreciate it because I'm a comedian mm -hmm. that's building a comedy club, not somebody who's building a comedy club. I'm a comedian that's building. So I take the best of what I've seen at different comedy clubs and I want to bring it back here. Yeah. And you know what you're talking about. You've been there, done that. You're yeah. not just a businessman. You're right. a comedian. And then as a DJ, I have to give you that sound. You know what I'm saying? Because nothing's better than when you sitting there waiting on the show to start. And then I'm, you know, my version of kid Capri. Look, I got, look at even the dog ready. The dog's I, ready. I got my version <laughs> of kid Capri in there jamming. And I think it's building a different ambiance. So when you're in my club, I want you to be like, damn, this is different. Yeah. You know, and go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I was actually going to say, and so what, what part of town is it at again? It's, it's uh, on the east side, right off Zaragoza. Are you guys open and doing shows? Not yet. Okay. Uh, of course, we had to go through uh, the city and make sure they okay everything mm -hmm. because we're rebuilding what they already had there. Uh, and then, you know, I didn't even know that the city had to okay you putting a sign outside. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. So it's like all this stuff now, this is the part of the game that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But I have enlisted people that do know. And now we're all sitting around putting our collective brains together. So now, knowing this business, if you don't have your I's dotted and your T's crossed, people look for your weakness. So we're giving you no weakness to look for. And, you know, people making it a battle between me and the other club. I feel like you might have stirred the pot a bit. Man, I don't give a damn. The reason, the reason why, what, let me try to think of the best way to say yeah. this. And I'll keep it pretty, pretty plain. I heard through the grapevine 
through someone that I know that does comedy and I'll leave them out of it just in case that the people at the other club, is that what we're calling it? We don't want to use the yeah, name. We'll, yeah, we'll do that. The other club, they were actually told that they couldn't go over to yours or else they could never go back. So I kind of like, I heard, I don't know if that's true. Have you heard anything like this? I heard it. Okay. And, and you know what? And if it's true. And this, this person is, is good source. Credible. Good source. Okay. Yeah. If it's true, I think that's very sad because me being a comedian, unless you're paying me mm-hmm. enough money not to go to other places to build, well, one, my craft, mm-hmm. build my audience. Only way a comedian get better is they hit stages. Yep. So if you working for me, let's say my club is open, you working for me on, let's say, Tuesday and Wednesday. What you do on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, whatever, blah, 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 honestly, I, I have better things to worry about than that. I want you as a comedian to go find other spots to you jump on stage to get better. That's the only way you get better. You would think that person also wants that. It's kind of strange that they would do something like that. But that's how I know you're stirring the pot a bit because that's, uh, I think it's a little wild. Well, you know, actually, I think that's very selfish. It's, they're almost like the El Paso electric of the comedy world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, when, you, when you know my thing For the is longest this, time, you have one option. But if you my, let's say you my boy. Okay. We, we ain't even got to be best friends. You're a comedian. Okay. Why would I close a door on you for no reason? Just because somebody, I mean, let's say, for instance, Walmart. Walmart is not finna tell people if you go to Target, you can't come over here and shop. Ain't nobody at the front of Walmart and say, hey, let me, let me check your receipt. Oh, Target, you can't come in here. Nobody does that. So yeah. show me in the Constitution of <laughs> Los, uh, Los, El Paso, Los Cruces, where there can only be one comedy club. You know what it does show is that, because you're right, Walmart wouldn't do that because no. they're top dog and they're not threatened. Right. So who would do that? Someone who feels Someone a little threatened. And, and, and this is when you put your big, big boy draws on. If you have competition, it should make you better. Competition is always good. Yeah, always. You would think. Always. But if you're telling someone, if you go play over there, you can't come play over here, then what are you really saying? Yeah. I mean, to me, that's selfish. That's actually being a comedy club bully. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so who are you as an owner or a general manager, whatever you want to be, to dictate what other comedians can do when they're not at your club. Yeah. And how much are you paying me not to go over to that other club? Because to me as a comedian, I tell every comedian, jump on as many stages as you want to. I, as the club owner of Crack Me Up Comedy Club. There you go. I am not into that politics shit. I'm, I'm not into that. I don't like, honestly, I think it's sad that a person who's been in business as long as they've been in business would catch that attitude with someone who's trying to come up in this business. And, 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 and since we're using Kevin Hart, yeah, Kevin Hart was Kevin Hart because people gave him opportunity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just like I told Rob, when you jump on stage, you never know who's out there watching you. Yeah. But you have to be able to jump on stages. So for me to say, if you go work at over there, you can't come over here, man, that, that's, that's me being a hypocrite. And I refuse to be a hypocrite, but that is one of the main reasons that I'm opening up this club. Because if you look at my comedy track record in this area, I've sold out almost every time to include El Paso. Mm -hmm. And I can count on my hand how many times I've been over to that other comedy club. If I'm selling tickets, comedy is about selling tickets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a record label. If you're not making hits, that record label going to drop you. But yeah. if you over there making these Drake hits, the record label like, man, what you need? New plane? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you yeah. bringing in people. Comedy is the same way. It's, it's a hustle. So why should we knock people hustle? Because there's competition. I mean, that's sad, bro. If, if, if it's true, and if you say your man credible, and I've heard it too, okay. I think that it's very sad for him to say that or to do that. And I think it's very piss poor on the scene because how can your scene grow as far as comedy if people is cutting off their nose to cut the spite they face? Yeah. It's a bad move. It, it is. And I'm so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to regularly have open mic. And when, I, when I'm having open mics, there's something that I'm sitting up right now and 
and I might be giving away some of the stuff that I'm doing, but I know too many people in too many different areas for me to see, like, say, you jump on stage mm-hmm. and you kill it. So I'm going to get on the phone and call my homeboys in these different areas and be like, yo, man, I got this cat down here y'all need to see. And not one time am I going to say, hey, man, let me be your manager, blah, 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 A, B, C, and D. The beauty of what I do is that I can watch you grow yeah. and be happy for you, generally happy for you. I want to see you grow. So for me to jump on the phone and call my boys or to text my boys, hey, man, I got this cat you need to meet. And I recently did it for one of my friends. Mm-hmm. I, I, I called a dude in Phoenix and I said, hey, man, I got this cat down here. And I'm old school, so excuse my slang. But I got this cat down here that's, 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 <laughs> that's good. And I want you to check him out. So I'm trying to connect them. Then somebody called me from uh, Albuquerque and said, hey, man, we're going to open up this comedy place, blah, 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 on Sundays. And I want you to come down. Who do you want to open? Hey, man, I got this cat. There you go. That is good. Get in Plug touch in with there. him. Bring him with me. And not one time have I told this dude, hey, man, uh, you owe me so-and-so, so-and-so, because I'm making mine, so why am I going to take away from you from doing yours? Yeah. So you were raised right, man. Some people have the thing in them. And I see, I used to sell cars. Yeah. And you see it a lot in car sales where people are like, uh, they, if you're the new person, they want to use you to get a car sale. Yeah. And so it's like, which is the opposite of how it should be. The older people should be helping the younger people because you know what it was like to be the younger guy and get your deal stolen or something. But yeah. some people don't have that where they're, they're just looking out for themselves because they're feared. When is my time up? When am I not going to have access to this? It's almost like an alcoholic that goes to a party yeah. and they're like, I'm going to drink all this alcohol because I don't know how I'm going to get more. I'm broke. Yeah. That's maybe all the alcohol I get. And if I drink it fast, uh, that's less they can drink. And it's more for me. It's like a weird thing. And so I think people have that thing where they just, they just try to look out for themselves. But what people don't realize and what you do is the residual effects of helping people out yeah. is like with Robbie or this person you're talking about now, like who knows where they're going to go with their DJ Amir. Yeah. And who knows who's going to, who's going to give you a little, I mean, give you a spot or give you some love or hook you up with something. And that's uh, that's, and then they're going to tell their friends and then you're going to have this reputation of who you actually are. And that's going to mean way more than a moment. You could have taken someone's shine or money. But when you do it from the heart. Hey there subscribers. What do I got to do to get subscriptions by you? Will you subscribe it down below? Hit the red button. No, no, no.